So Hannah, a lot of people I've met that came across this snake often think this is a machete. But this is actually a dose cockroach, cutler, bird snake, bird eating snake, bird eating tree snake, common bird snake, southern bird snake, liana snake, northeastern puffing snake, common puffing snake, mahogany puffing snake, Amazon whistling snake, hissing snake, or South American puffing snake, Phrynonax polylepis. That's a mouthful of names. Just as the name suggests, they feed almost exclusively on birds, but I've seen some going after bats, and someone showed me one eating a frog. You can see them up and about during the day, but on rare occasions, they are active at night. They are mainly arboreal snakes and spend most of their time in the forest canopy. Now, not much is known about them, especially reproductive-wise. There have been some studies of them breeding around March, August, and December, and nest being found between January and May, with six to nine large white eggs in them. They have also observed juveniles emerging around September and November, but again, more studies need to be done. I personally have seen a nest of 10 hatchlings emerging at one time. Juvenile dose cockroaches are mottled and plaided with orange, cream color, greenish brown stripes all over their bodies. And because of their cryptic pattern, some people mistake them for juvenile Mapapi balsains. But as they get older, their cryptic patterns will fade and there will be a green, green brown or green yellow color with yellow under their chins that goes down to its neck. Unlike the machete, the yellow doesn't continue to its belly and tail. They can grow to a length of around 7 feet. Oddly enough, they retain their stripes from when they were juveniles, but the stripes are hidden and will appear when they puff up or try to camouflage as a result of feeling threatened. Every time I come across them, their first instinct is to stay put. They will kink their bodies to camouflage into the background and then slowly try to move away and maybe run. But they will not hesitate to defend themselves and will puff up, hence the name Puffing Snake, rattle their tail and strike. Yeah, they kind of puff up so they can look a little bigger and intimidating. The best thing to do when you see them is to leave them alone. Once they realize you're not on them, they will quickly look to vacate the area. They are non-venomous. Well, at least I thought so. But I've seen a study that says they have a mild venom that is tailored for birds. But I myself have been bitten several times while handling this species, so it's not harmful to humans. I've often seen this species of snake traveling in pairs, and this is the only snake I've observed with that behavior. And if you think their behavior is kind of like a milder version of a tigre, not so really bright version of a tigre, it's because they are in the same family as tigres and yellow belly puffing snakes. They rather puff up and look big and fight than run away. And sadly, that is one of the main reasons why their population drops so fast and because of the introduction of mongoose and domesticated cats. But thankfully, I've observed in some areas their population is on the rise. So, I am the wildlife master. Like, share, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, blessings and bless out.